Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number nine at the fairgrounds on Saturday. It's the grade three mineshaft handicap for older horses on the dirt at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's take a peek at this field. We've got a horse coming out of the Breeders' Cup Classic. That is the number five, Keeneland graduate Lone Sailor, who didn't break very well in the Classic, but that fast pace really played right into his hands. He came with a nice, decent little run to finish six. That was his best race, I think, by far. Yeah, I think it was probably the best race he ran last year. He was a, an okay three-year-old. It felt like probably just a couple below the top level three-year-old last year, but he, it does feel like he was starting to find himself towards the end of the year. You know, listen, he's one of, uh, what, three uh, new four-year-olds in this race. Um, he has every right to take a step forward. He's, I guess he's got the right running style for this race, Dan. There's plenty of pace signed on. It should set up for him. Um, I can see him doing well in this race. I don't know how short a price I want to take on him. Let's talk about the other newly turned four-year-olds, horses that had some pretty big reputations last year at three. We'll start with the number nine, Flame Away, five to one on the morning line. This horse, of course, won the Sam F. Davis, then ran second in the Tampa Bay Derby, the Bluegrass, the Jim Dandy. He did some nice things for trainer Mark Cassie. We just have not seen him since a very dull performance in the Smarty Jones, and he's listed as a vet scratch uh, a few weeks ago at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, and listen, he's a cool horse. He's a real hard trying horse. He's got speed. He'll fight you every step of the way. Um, I'm not sure that he has, you know, all the talent in the world. I think he just makes the most of what he has. Dan, we'll see if he can take a step forward as a four-year-old. I don't like him that much off the layoff. He's been very versatile. He's won on turf, synth, dirt, wet dirt. And he also has speed. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. They are projecting flame away to make the early lead. The red bar indicates, though, that he might have to work a little bit to get the lead after the first half mile. The number 13 quip is that other three-year-old I was talking about, that highly regarded three-year-old from last year returning off a layoff. He won the Tampa Bay Derby, beat flame away on the square that day, then came back to run a good second in the Arkansas Derby. The pregnancy he had a ready-made excuse. Well, a couple of them. He was dealing with Triple Crown winner Justify. He also had to deal with a wet track but after that race the connections were keen on running him in the Indiana Derby in the middle of July and then he just never showed up to the races this is a long layoff a tough outside post and I wonder if the connections are going to give him one off the bench yeah things are working against him in this race but he does have some ability um, it felt like he was one of those three-year-olds who really had a chance to take a step forward in the second half of the year but it didn't work out for him uh, we'll see what we get from him off the layoff the post isn't great there's a lot of speed in this race he's a pretty nice horse though Let's talk a little bit about the number 11, Ballard High. We see him relatively close to the pace on the pace projector. Lots of seconds on this horse's page. He's coming out of a couple of off-the-turf races. I think this is a horse that is really going to need to step it up, Mike, because on figs and from a class standpoint, he might be a little bit outclassed. Yeah, I mean, it's not the strongest grade three in the world, but he, he really does have to approve in this race. He's a horse who, when he started out for Linda Rice in New York last year, actually felt like there was a chance he could really develop and be pretty good. I don't know, Dan. I don't know if he's actually taken that step forward. His races are okay, but they don't make him a contender yet. He does have a positive formulator fact. His trainer, Dallas Stewart, over the past four years with older graded stakes dirt routers, 29% winners, a $2.32 ROI. The 12 Thirst for Life began his career as a very promising two-year-old. Multiple stakes placed at two, then ended up dropping into the claiming ranks. Trainer Wes Hawley took this horse for $50,000 back in 2017 and did some great work with him. He finished second in the mine shaft last year year, but his last couple of races rather disappointing, and now he's going to come into this race off about a two-month layoff, removing blinkers. Do you think he's just off form? Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough call because those last two races really have to give you a cause for concern because he just didn't run well in those races. Prior to that, though, he ran a bunch of races that would make him a contender in here. Um, it will all come down to price for me. It feels like he could be a good one, and if he's a, you know, a relatively big price in this race, I want to use him somewhere. Imperative has banked $3.2 million in his career. The nine-year-old doesn't owe anybody anything. He was almost 200 to one in the Pegasus World Cup. He probably didn't belong in that race, but you have to wonder at the age of nine, while he has races on the way back machine that easily would win this race if maybe he's just a little bit long in the tooth right now but he's a real cool old timer yeah they're going to try it again here we'll see if he can turn it around ever since that you know big long layoff um before he got back to the races last june it just feels like he's come back a totally different horse's races since then they just don't make him that competitive in races like this. Same connections of the hard-hitting Ohio bred, the seven Mo don't know. All this horse has done is win 17 of 31 lifetime starts, but he got the test last time out, didn't he, in the grade three Hooper, and he, he didn't pass it. 
Yeah, his last two races leave a lot to be desired. Uh, they got him out of that those uh, smaller tracks where he does so well, and he, he hasn't really been up for it. I think Crew Chief's got an outside chance in here for a great trainer in Michael Maker. We haven't seen him since November when he finished second to Mr. Buff. And Mr. Buff has just been on a tear over the winner in New York. After winning that race over Crew Chief, Mr. Buff came back to win the Alex Robb for New York Reds with a 97 buyer, then won the Jazzle Stakes against Open Foes with a 102. And Crew Chief did it from off the pace, which isn't really his preferred running style. I think this horse maker is slowly figuring out. I kind of agree with you, Dan. I thought he ran deceptively well last time. He really didn't have any chance in that race. He took him back to last. He came wide off the turn. Um, I liked the way he tried. He just couldn't get to the informed Mr. Buff. That was a nice performance last time. Deceptively good performance last time. Lone on luck cross-centered in the turf race. The fairgrounds handicap coming off a win and off the turf fashion over Ballard High. Paired up by our tops in his last two, but they're only 81. That's a far cry of what some of these horses usually run. Yeah, even with his best race, he's not really that competitive. Let's take a look at our top picks for this race. I'm interested in your thoughts on the Louisiana, which was the local prep for the Mineshaft Handicap. It was won by Harlan Punch, who we know from New York. He was, he's been around for a long time. He's won 10 of 36. I thought Harlan Punch was pretty game that day. And I also realized there wasn't a lot of pace in that race, and he might be chasing a much faster situation here. But Harlan Punch is another horse that's got a lot of grit. He's kind of like an older version of Flame Away. He wants to beat you, and Brad Cox has him in good form. Yeah, he's been in good form for a long time. He was in great form when we last saw him in New York, too. Um, I do think he had a pretty soft trip last time. Um, he managed to dig in and get it done. I like the effort from him. Um, he is a horse who I think, even going back to his days in New York, he always had to be a little concerned about him when the paces were fast because he doesn't really like to be in behind horses in his, in his race. He likes to be out in the clear and he likes to be right up there um, with the pace. So those things can really work against him in a race like this, Dan. I don't have any knocks on the races that he's been running. He's the kind of horse I would use in here, but I'm going to try and beat him if he's going to be one of the favorites uh, at post time. What about the others coming out of the Louisiana? Silver Dust finished second that day. He has just been in very consistent and good form for Brett Calhoun. He's got the tactical speed to sit just off the pace. Um, he ran well last time out. Did you think he should have been, uh, he should have gotten to Harlan Punch? What, what happened? Did, would you take he, anyone out of that race other than Harlan Punch? I mean, he had every chance to get Harlan Punch in that race. He just couldn't do it. Um, that's sort of been the story of his life. I think he's a nice horse, and I have a big thing for Silver Dust. I've always liked him. Um, I've been waiting for him to sort of break through into bigger races, and it hasn't happened for him. Um, I still like him. I think he could get a piece of this, but he's tough to take on top, I think. And Fat Man finished third. Again, it looked like he had his chances in the stretch. Maybe he was compromised by a lack of pace up front and gets I mean, a better situation. didn't go that fast in front of him. He had a good trip overall, though, and it felt like he was no match for those horses. I don't even think his best race makes him one of the major contenders in here. Your horse has the upside. That's the six third days. 20 to 1 on the morning line. He's only raced five times in his career, and he won very nicely last time out in his first and only start around two turns. Uh, I didn't think it was the strongest 2x field in the world he beat that day. I liked the way he did it, and you're going to get a price on, on a horse that finally seems to be living up to his potential, because when Todd had him early in his career, he was pretty good. Yeah, he was pretty good to start. It's unfortunate that he missed as much time as he did. Um, I sort of like the way he's rounding himself back into form, though, Dan, after his first three starts back as they stretch him out progressively. Um, listen, I know he has to improve to win this race, but it's just not the strongest grade three field in the world. I don't think he has to improve that much. He's always had ability. I like his running style because he's a horse who will rally from off the pace, and it feels like that's what you want to be doing in this field. And I'm just hoping he can take a step forward at a price. I'm hoping that Harlan Punch can break, let Flame Away go, get to the outside of that horse, or break, go to the front and let Flame Away off the layoff chase. Maybe Flame Away needs a race. I'll take Harlan Punch. I'm going two five four eight. Give me numbers. I went uh, with a six on top. I'll use the two four five, maybe a little of the thirteen with him. Grade three, Mineshaft Handicap, one of several graded stakes at the fairgrounds on Saturday. This one has an approximate post of 425 Central. Good luck.